YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and in this video I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that most of us watched yesterday between the Ravens and the Bengals I say most of us because I know not everybody watched it and a lot of people they started watching and they turned it off they walked away and hey, I mean it is what it is you know y'all know we were watching the whole thing though we wasn't going nowhere despite how ugly it got sometimes but the Ravens they were fighting they were fighting and um I, I was hoping that this game would be stressful. And what I mean by that, I, when the Ravens game is stressful, that means that they are in it till the end. They were in it for a while. And it's like, it was frustrating because whenever the Ravens would put themselves back in it, they would take themselves right back out. They would take themselves right back out. Um, but anyway, let's, uh, before we get into our analysis or whatnot, let's look at some of these numbers. Uh, first downs, Ravens 20, Bengals 15. Well, Ravens win in that category. Rushing first downs, Ravens 7, Bengals 2. Uh, passing first downs, they each had 12. Um, let me see. Total plays, Ravens had 75, Bengals had 64. Total yards, Ravens had 386, Bengals had 257. Hey, Ravens win again. Uh, total drives, Ravens had 15, Bengals had 13. Yards per play, Ravens had 5.1, Bengals had 4. Passing yards, Ravens had 276, Bengals had 202. Interceptions thrown, <laughs> Ravens had 2, Bengals had 0. Um, sacks, Ravens got sacked 4 times, uh, Bengals only got sacked twice. Uh, rushing yards, Ravens had 110, Bengals had 55. Ravens literally doubled the Bengals' rushing yards. Um, so, but here's where, where the Ravens lost the game. Um, where they, they won this battle right here with the numbers because turnovers, Ravens had four, Bengals only had one. So, hey, Ravens, they, they got more turnovers than the Bengals. But, of course, that's not a good thing. And if you turn the ball over four times and you expect to win, Boy, you, you better be playing some lights out football on defense or something. Um, but the thing about it, these turnovers, the turnovers is literally what gave this Bengals team life. It's literally what not only kept the Bengals in the game, but gave the Bengals the game was the turnovers. Because I remember uh, early on in the game, I'm like, man, every time that the, the Ravens, whether they punted the ball or they got a field goal or whatever, Every time that the Ravens didn't turn the ball over, Bengals, the most that they got was a field goal. Or they punt. They weren't moving the ball like that. They had, and, and this is different from last game where they played because last game T. Higgins was hurt. So they got to focus more on Jamar Chase. The Ravens did. Um, and then and the Ravens had a, a Marcus Peters too. They had Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. This game, the Bengals had a Jamar Chase. They had a Tyler Boyd. They had T. Higgins. They had Hayden Hurst. They had all that guy. They had Joe Mixon. They had all that guys. Obviously Joe Burrow too, who just been balling this season too. But they had all that guys, and the Ravens were holding it down on defense. They were really holding it down, and that's those some really really good offensive players, obviously. But the turnovers just they it gave the Bengals the game. Whenever Ravens were turning the ball over, Bengals turned it. They were turning the touchdowns early. Like first it was the uh there was an interception by Anthony Brown, I think on his, his first drive. Then there was another interception by Anthony Brown, even though the second one wasn't his fault. Then it was when they were going for it right before halftime, and then there was a fumble. Bengals just picked it up in the end zone, boom, touchdown. And then there was the Sammy Watkins fumble. Oh, the, mm, mm, mm. But yeah, Bengals, them early turnovers, they turned into points. So Bengals ain't even had to do no work. They ain't even had to do no work. Ravens made it easy for them. So what that did for me, it actually gave me a, an even bigger confidence boost going into next week, especially if Lamar comes back. If Lamar don't come back, <laughs> but anyway, we'll talk about that when we talk about it. But it gave me a bigger confidence boost because the Ravens with so many backups, especially on offense, there wasn't no Mark Andrews. There was no J.K. Dobbins. Gus got taken out the game early on. They just cut to Sean Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, no Lamar, not even the Tyler Huntley. No Kevin Zeitler. So, it, it was a lot of their starters were out of this game. But the fact that it was the turnovers that literally gifted the Bengals the game, 
that lets me know like hey all right now all right ravens y'all we'll love to see y'all shock the world next week and they have the ability to don't just don't give the ball away don't give the ball away so anyway um anthony brown we'll just uh we'll, we'll get started with him um Anthony Brown, when you look at the numbers, 19 for 44, 286, two interceptions. You look at that, that's ugly. It's very ugly. 19 for 44, that's not even 50% completion percentage. But then you got you to gotta look at the context. Number one, undrafted rookie free agent making his first NFL start. That's big. That, like, against the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that's on fire right now. On fire. Like, they, and they were playing for something in this game. So there's that, um, but the first interception that he threw, it, it was bad. It was bad. I know somebody told me it was intended for Isaiah Likely, and I was like, it don't look like it, but, hey, I'll I take your word for it. Um, and then, so that was the first interception. I was like, all right, cool, undrafted rookie free agent. Expectation should have been low going into this game for him from fans anyway, in my opinion. But it's like, all right, cool. So he threw that. So then um, the second interception – that wasn't even on him. Yeah, he did throw it a little behind Demarcus Robinson, but Demarcus Robinson should have caught that. That was more on Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus Robinson dropped the ball, <laughs> and what happened? The ball stayed up in the air. Bengals picked it off. They picked it off. So it's like, man, I um I felt for Anthony Brown because he's in a very tough position because he um his pass catches for a lot of the game they were not helping him out. Drops by literally everybody. And they, everybody dropped the ball in one way or another. Whether figuratively or literally, the Ravens' pass catchers dropped the ball. Most of it was literal, but uh, likely he had drops. Charlie Kolar, he had drops. Demarcus Robinson, this was a really bad game from him. He had several drops. I think the worst one for me for Demarcus Robinson, it came on, um, remember the play? Where I think it was in the third quarter, I think. The play with John Harbaugh challenged it. Because Demarcus Robinson, Anthony Brown threw him the pass. Demarcus Robinson, he caught it. It looked like it hit the ground and kind of moved a little bit. But he, he said, hey, I caught it. I caught it. Y'all need to challenge that. When he saw they ruled it incomplete, he said, y'all need to challenge it. He was doing all this hand signaling and stuff. Basically saying, hey, it's, it's on me. Hey, trust me. I caught that ball. Trust me. I caught it. I guarantee you I caught it. Challenge it. Trust me. So Harbaugh challenged it. And I didn't think it was a bad challenge. I know a lot of y'all that was in the live stream thought it was a terrible challenge. I didn't think it was a bad challenge. Um, but how about challenge it and the refs, they ruled it incomplete. I'm like, all right, cool. They ruled it incomplete. So then the very next play, Anthony Brown snaps the ball. He goes lit literally right back to Demarcus Robinson. So Demarcus Robinson, who had been yelling and screaming, said, hey, I caught it as a catch. I cut. Anthony Brown goes right back to Demarcus Robinson. What does he do? Drop it. Drop it. I'm like, man, you were just literally doing all that hollering and screaming just to drop the very next play? Okay, well, great. Great. Um, who else? Sammy Watkins. Oh, Sammy Watkins. He made two nice plays, or well, really, I guess one and a half nice plays. He, he, there was one little comeback route that he ran. Anthony Brown threw it to him. Then he got some yak. Then they did a similar play, a little more down the field, but Sammy Watkins caught it. Uh, then he was getting some yak. He was fighting for yards, fighting for yards, fighting for yards. And the Bengals ripped it out of his hand. Ripped it out of his hand. I said, oh, man. And I ain't gonna never had no problem with anybody fighting for yards because you, you, you're trying to get more yards for your team. You got to secure the ball, though, man. You got to. Um, Ravens pass catchers were not helping out Anthony Brown today a lot of times. And, and now, granted, there were some, some passes where they were just off. They were off. They throw them out of bounds. On the ground. They, they were off. But a lot of his passes were right to his receivers. Minus the one in the end zone to Charlie Collar uh, or Cola. But because that, that one was behind Charlie Cola. Like he, he wasn't catching that one. Um, but a lot of his passes were right on the money. Anthony Brown even threw a touchdown to Demarcus Robinson that he dropped. He dropped. He dropped. So it was a. Uh, ugly day um for ravens wide receivers in this one but what's new um now despite him having a couple of drops um isaiah likely he had a career game today uh eight catches for 103 yards eight catches for 103 yards i think his my favorite catch from him was the one down the sideline where he literally like had to fight the guy for it he had to and i was like all right there you go likely 
I, I, I loved it. So that was nice. Um, so likely, like, the potential's there. You just got to clean up on the drops. I mean, <laughs> that's going to be like a Mark Andrews where you just, you get the drops out of the way every game. You get the drops out of the way early. You got you to gotta get at least one drop in the game, and then, okay, you go do it, do your thing. You ball out. I mean, and for me, it's like, and I said the same thing about Rashad Bateman. Now, obviously, we don't want any drops. I said the same thing about Hollywood. Obviously, we don't want any drops. But if you're going to drop the ball, if you, as long as you're making more plays than drops, all right. But then you think about in critical situations. So hopefully you don't have situational drops and what. But anyway, um, Isaiah likely he had a uh, career game. Uh, it did come in a loss, uh, but he had a career game uh, yesterday. Um, Charlie Kolar, he got his first four catches in the NFL um, in the game as well. So shout out to him. Uh, who else? Tylen Wallace. Yeah, Tylen Wallace got a catch. He got a nice first down. James Prochet. Oh, Prochet. Um, oh, it was so sad. Anthony Brown, uh, again, undrafted rookie free agent quarterback. And these are his pass catches. He, even he's probably like, whoa, what am I supposed to do? Threw that deep ball to James Prochet. James Prochet catches it by the sideline. It's like, oh, let's go. James Prochet even was getting some yak too. I said, all right, all Prochet. Let's go. Penalty. Oh, what's the penalty? I ain't see any defensive pass interference. I ain't even see no defensive holding. Legal man downfield. What was going on? What happened? Proche stepped out of bounds. Negated the whole play. Took it away. And again, Ravens is this. We, we, we've been talking about this literally from beginning of the season. Ravens this year have been their own worst enemies. They've been their own worst enemies this season. And it's just something that you hope, you would hope that they would not do that in the playoffs. But usually, usually that's what gets teams eliminated. Whatever their Achilles heel is throughout the season, especially with the Ravens, that's what it's been in their playoff games recently. Whatever their biggest weakness is, it, it becomes 10 times worse in the playoffs. But hopefully, hopefully they can clean some stuff up. Um, Drake. Drake got a touchdown on the ground. Let's look at his numbers. He had 16 carries for 60 yards uh, and one touchdown. So shout out to Drizzy Drake um, for getting that touchdown. Um, I did not like like the game from him. It was solid. I just did not like the play call. I didn't like the situational play call there by Giro and them. Um, where the Ravens were going for it on a fourth and one. And King and Drake is not a short yardage back. That would be a Gus Edwards, even a J.K. Dobbins. Not King and Drake, though. Ken Drake is bouncing to the outside guy. If he find a hole, he can hit it or whatnot. But the short yardage back, no. Fourth and one. I was hey, baby, they do play action. No, they ran it straight up the middle with Ken Drake. I, I didn't think that was a good play call. I, I didn't. I wasn't a fan of it. Like I said, if it would have been a different running back, like a Gus or a JK, okay. But with Drake, no. That's that's not what you do there. Um. So there was that. Uh, early on. Um. I mean, speaking of play caller. Another another one that I was just like, huh? Um, it was on the first drive. On the first drive, first, second down win, it was third and long. Ravens did a screen to Isaiah Likely, and I, I hated it from jump before the play was even over. And I was still like, why Why would they? But, again, it, it was tricky because it, with this game, you went into it with low expectations, but at the same time, you're still like, hey, Ravens, come on now. Come on now. So that was that. Um, offensive line, they were solid in this one. They, uh, I didn't really see Anthony Brown get roughed up too much in this one. Um, there was a – oh, but on, on, on the fumble, though. Oof, on the fumble. Ronnie Stanley just got dogged from jump. Literally from jump. I think, was it Trey Hendricks, Hendrickson? I think it was. But whoever it was, Ronnie Stanley got dog from jump. Then Morgan Moses, he ain't even see the fumble because he was too busy still trying to block somebody even though his guy was loose. Too, and it, it, was just, it was just a mess. Now, I did appreciate Ravens going forward in that situation. What I did not like was the situational play calling, though, because uh, it was right before halftime. Um, and Ravens would... They, they, they did, it was right before halftime, I forgot how much time was left, but on the first down, they ran the ball, and I'm thinking like, no, man, air that thing out, you trying to get some points, let's go, man, air that thing out, 
But then, so they, they ran it on first down, then on second down they passed the ball, and then they end up having a fumble that the Bengals recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. So, again, taking out the legwork for the Bengals, man. It's crazy that this this game, with everything that the Ravens did and them having, what, four turnovers, they, they only lost by 11. With all the backups, they lost by 11. So, it's like, ooh, okay. That's a little, little glimmering, glimmering of hope. But, anyway, um... So yeah, man, that, that that was Ravens offense. A lot of the same stuff. Uh, Gus Edwards, he lost, he left the game because of a uh, concussion. So hopefully, well, they said head injury. I don't think they officially said concussion, but we already know how that goes. Um, so yeah, that was that. Uh, special teams. Justin Tucker made his field goals. Y'all know how that goes. He scored nine points. Ravens got a touchdown. So they, yeah, they got sixteen. Lone touchdown of the game was from Drake. Um, but yeah, oh, that was another thing too. It was uh in the first early on, it's funny because a lot of a lot of y'all was um I know my guy Mike B said it, and some other people said it too. Because uh, it was the fourth quarter. I forgot how much time was left, but it was a time where I was like, all right, Ravens, they they about to go for it. I think it was fourth and five. Fourth and five in the red zone. I'm like, oh yeah, they they about to go for it. And they said, No, we're kicking the field goal. And my guy Mike was like, he said, No, no, Harbaugh Hall- only goes for it on fourth in the first quarter. Fifth, fourth quarter? Nah, he doesn't. But in the first quarter, yeah. I said, like, oh, well, I guess you're right. Um, defense. Defense. Defense, they they were doing a good job. Shout out to Daryl Worley. Because I when they, uh, they brought him back, they put him back on the active roster, I was like, oh, okay. I ain't had no expectations for him. I didn't even think he was going to really play that much. But he had the game of his life yesterday. The game of his life. That man was balling. Yeah, he did give up a touchdown to Jamar Chase, but that's Jamar Chase. That's Jamar Chase. He had the game of his life. Breaking up passes, making big hits, almost got an interception. He had the game of his life. He balled out. Kyle Hamilton, he played pretty good, too. And, again, as the season has gone on, he's just gotten better and better. So that was nice. Marlon Humphrey. Uh, he did get caught on by, was that T. Higgins or was it Chase? I forgot which one of them it was. It was on the sideline. And I know it, with football, it's so quick. With, with us watching, it's easier for us to be like, oh, they should have done this, they should have done that, they should have done that. Um, but when you're out there on the field, it's a whole different story. Uh, but there was a catch on the sideline where I think it was T. Higgins. He jumped up and caught it, and I was hoping Marlon would like, push him out. But it looked like Marlon kind of like he- helped him stay in. But, um, again, it's football. It's tricky, man. It, it, it's so easy from our, our point of view. To say, oh, this, that, and the third, but from where they at on the field, it's obviously a lot harder and a lot tougher. Um, but yeah, defense. Uh, besides the Jamal Chase touchdown, did, did they give up? Did they, I think they gave up one to Joe Mixon? Right? They gave. I think they gave up one on the ground. I want to say they did. Let me, let me let me look it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Joe Mixon got one because he oh he ain't, he ain't get no yards. Oh, yeah, yeah, he had eleven carries for twenty seven yards, but he did get that touchdown. Yeah, I remember that when they pushed it in. But Ravens, like, especially given the situation, they, they, they defense was doing their thing. Like, looking at Bengals numbers, Joe Burrow, 25 for 42. Uh, so they, they, they were throwing that ball a lot in early on. Early in all, they came out in the spread offense, empty backfield. They were throwing that ball. Um, but Ravens, they held it down. They held Joe Burrow. And again, they held Joe Burrow with Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Hayden Hurst. They held him to 215 yards. He averaged 5.1 yards a throw. They held him to 215 yards. With all of that, oof, that's great. And then Joe Mixon, he ain't, he ain't go off. Jamal Chase had eight catches for 86 yards. Um, Tyler Boyd had a nice day, 5 for 51. Um, but T. Higgins had one catch for seven yards. One catch for seven yards. Had him a drop, too. That's crazy. I, I wouldn't have thought that, man, going into this game, that that would all be all that he had. Um, they also forced a fumble on Joe Burrow. Oh, Ajabo. David Ajabo forced a fumble um, on Joe Burrow. And who recovered it? Patrick Queen. I forgot who recovered it. But I was like, all right, there we go. I don't even think Adafi, Adafi Away was on the field for that play. Justin Houston, man, I felt for him. Him and Calais Campbell, they came so close. Calais Campbell came close to getting 100 sacks. Justin Houston came close to getting uh, his 500,000. Cause he got, he got like the, he got he had like a a one point five million dollar bonus that he would get with a certain number of sacks, 
but he came just a half sack short uh, of getting the full 1.5 mil. So he got one mil, but he didn't get that 500,000. Um, so I was like, oh, man, that's tough. Uh, and Calais Campbell here, he came short of a bonus too. Um, but, yeah, hey, hopefully they can get a, a nice bonus and go get a Super Bowl. Nice way to end the, your careers, right? But anyway, um, Roquan Smith flying around per usual. Um, for, for most of this game, the Ravens, they did pretty good uh, when it came to tackling. But there were some times when they would have some hiccups here and there. Uh, where they would, like, there was one, I think Joe Mixon threw a check down pass. I mean, excuse me, Joe Burrow threw a check down pass to Joe Mixon. And Joe Mixon started taking off, and everybody was just missing tackles. I said, oh, boy, there we go. Um, but for the most part, I think Ravens tackling was was solid in this game. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, looking at the tackles for loss, Roquan Smith had a tackle for loss. Marcus Williams had a tackle for loss. Daryl Worley had a tackle for loss. Patrick Queen had a tackle for loss. So that's always good. The more the merrier, right? But anyway, um, yeah, like I said, this game, it, it gives me hope that the Ravens, they could do something next week. It really does, man. Um, so it should be a fun one. should be a good one. Justice Hill was at kick return, uh, and he looked comfortable back there. I, I I do wish they would put him at punt return, but I guess they, they have James Prochet back there. I wish they would put Justice Hill back there. He has so much more potential than Prochet for a spark in a return game, but I guess they just want to go with something safe with Prochet's hands, I guess. But I, don't know, I would probably put Justice Hill back there because he just, yeah. Then we could use any kind of spark that we could possibly get. So, yeah, that was that, man. That was that. Um, so... Whew, what a game it was. Oh, yeah, the half a sack that Justin Houston got, it was with Adafi away. So, shout out to Adafi away, man. Um, I know this 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 had been a season for him. This had been quite a, uh, a quiet season for him. So, I, I don't know what the issue is exactly. I, I don't know, but hopefully he can figure it out and Ravens can figure it out with him. And So, yeah, but nice to see in the job side. And this was his a career day for him, too. He got the most snaps that he ever got in his NFL career. Uh, one snap versus however many he got uh, in the game. Um, so, anyway, that's it. This is the last post game thought to the regular season. Hopefully, we can be making. Uh, I want to say, was it four more or five more post game thoughts videos? So, wild card, division, conference. So hopefully, we can make four more post game thoughts video. Hopefully, I didn't count on it, but hopefully, because you never know. Hopefully. We can make four more post-game thoughts videos, but we'll see how things go. I love y'all so much, team. Keep it clean. Thank you for making this uh, such a fun season. And it ain't over. And, of course, like we always say, we, we, we year-round, baby. Ain't no off-season over here. NFL get off-season. We, we don't get no off-season, man. We, we year-round over here. So, um, But I, I appreciate y'all because this, this season was great. It was great. Uh, we hit some nice milestones, some unexpected milestones. Uh, it was a lot of special moments uh, throughout this season. Um, so I, I appreciate y'all supporting and just helping out a lot, contributing to the channel so much because y'all are a huge part of this whole thing, man, for real. You may not think you are, but trust me, you are. Every comment, every question from a subscriber, every like, every subscription, every time you tell somebody about the channel, or you're talking about it with your friends, your family, you're talking about it at the barbershop, at the airport, wherever. I appreciate it, man, because y'all looking out for real, man. So, I love y'all. I appreciate everything that y'all do. Shout out to you, Team Keep It Clean. And we out.